Okay, uh, we've been working with the Laplace transform. Uh, here's the basic definition of it. And we have used our definition to derive the Laplace transform of different types of functions. And then along the way, we found other equations that we could use to derive the Laplace transform. We didn't have to go through the integration technique method or using the integration uh, uh, definition. And that's how we found the Laplace transform of this function, this function, the sine of x, and the cosine of x. And this right now to date, that is our table of functions and their corresponding Laplace transforms. And we've had some practice now using this table so that when we're given a function, we can find its Laplace transform. Or conversely, when we're given a Laplace transform, we can use the table to find its inverse Laplace transform and find the corresponding function f of x. So, armed with this information, let's start solving some differential equations. Remember now what we have been working with in previous videos is if there's a function f of x and that has a corresponding Laplace transform, then if we take the derivative of that function, its Laplace transform is going to be equal to s times the Laplace transform of the original function minus the original function evaluated at zero. Now, let's use this information to solve a differential equation. Suppose we have this equation, f prime of x plus f of x equals 1. And say we are provided with the information that f is 0 equals 0. So we don't we do not know what f of x is. Um, we don't know what f of x is. We certainly don't know what is the Laplace transform is. So for the Laplace transform of f of x, all we can say is it's going to be equal to some function of s. So let's go ahead and take the Laplace transform of this entire equation here. For this, it's going to be this. So from this, we're going to have this expression, s f of s minus f of 0 plus the Laplace transform of that, that's just f of s, equal to the Laplace transform of 1 which equals 1 over s. Now again, let's just be clear about what we're doing here. We don't know what f of x is. That's what we're trying to solve for. So if we don't know what f of x is, we certainly don't know what its Laplace transform is. So at this point, all we can say is it's just some function f of s. So there's f of x. There's its corresponding Laplace transform f of s, whatever it may turn out to be. But now, for f prime of x, that's going to be equal to s times this f of s, that's what the relationship states here, minus f of 0. And that's this part right here. And of course, we're given the information that this is 0. So now we're going to have f of s times 1 plus s equals 1 over s, or f of s, that's going to be equal to 1 over s times s plus 1. So there, we did solve for the Laplace transform of f of x. We didn't know what it was, but now we do. It's this. Okay, now if we look in our table of 
functions and their corresponding the boss transforms. And hopefully you have your own table written out at this point. Here it is. Which one of these looks like would fit this expression here? Doesn't look like any of them do. So we're kind of stuck. So here, at this stage of the game, we're going to do what we're going to have to do in many problems, and that is use the technique of partial fractions. And if you're rusty on that, if you go to Digital University, dot org, and look under the calculus videos, you can see there's a section there for integration techniques. And in that section, um, there's an introductory video concerning the technique of partial fractions. And then there's several videos afterwards where we use that technique. So if you're a little bit rusty with it, you might find it worthwhile to uh, look at those videos. But here, let's see what we can do for this problem. Let's see if we can make this simpler. So... We have 1 over s times s plus 1. These are both linear factors. So that will equal a over s plus b over s plus 1. Now multiply both sides of the equation by this. We have 1 equals a times s plus 1 plus b times s. We collect terms and we have a plus b times s plus a equals 1. So there is no s term over here. So a plus b has to be 0. And also given the fact that a equals 1, because there's only one constant here, there's one constant there, and that's 1. So a equals 1. B has to be minus 1. So this, that's 1 over S minus 1 over S plus 1. So the inverse of Boss transform of 1 over s times s plus 1 and we want, we want to seek that because the inverse of Boss transform of this taking it to both sides of the equation f of x of course that equals the inverse of Boss transform of f of s or the inverse of Boss transform of this, or which equals the inverse of Boss transform of 1 over s minus the inverse of Boss transform of 1 over s plus 1. We know what this is. That's just 1 minus e to the minus x. And there we have it. We solved the equation. So the technique is remember this relationship. And then once we have our equation, we want to know what this is. That's our unknown. And if we don't know what this is, we certainly don't know what it's the Boss transform is. It's just some function f of s, we take the Laplace transform of the entire equation, and we can determine what this is. It's this right here. Uh, in this form, though, we don't know how to take the inverse of Laplace transform, so we break this up by using partial fractions. And as soon as we do this, now we're in a position where we can take the inverse of Laplace transforms, and there we obtain our function. So that is sort of the strategy that we use. Um, 
we had one more problem that we were going to try to solve with the first order differential equation. It's a little bit more complicated. We won't have time for that in this video. Join us in the next video and let's see if we can solve a problem that's a little bit more complicated.